So there's a strategy that I employ in After Effects called effect stacking. And simply what this is, is a hierarchy of effects uh, that you can use in pretty much any After Effects project uh, to help add detail and character you know, to any type of motion graphics work. So in this video, we're gonna be creating this entire composition from scratch and then using this effect stacking strategy to help enhance this composition to make it look awesome. So please be sure to stack up on those likes on this video because it does help us out tremendously and let's get started. Alrighty, here we are in After Effects. You can download our project files for free if you wish to follow along. So we're gonna create some of these cool basic designer type elements first, and then we're gonna get into effect stacking because I wanna show you that you can take some very basic graphics and you can enhance it with just several really cool effects. So the first thing we're gonna create is this background, like the particles and this really cool circle that we have here that's gonna help create some dimension in our scene. So here we are in a tutorial composition and we have a title already in here. So first thing we'll do is come here and grab the lips tool here at the top and make sure that the color is set to white and we'll click okay. All we're gonna do is click, hold down, shift on our keyboard to draw out a perfect circle like this. Then we come here to the line tab and center this up. So we wanna make sure that this is in the center of our composition. You can go to window align if you don't see that align tab. All right, so then what we wanna do is take the shape layer, put it underneath our title. Now our title is white and that's exactly what I wanted to do because I wanna come here to effect, generate and grab gradient ramped with this, right? Right here. And I'm gonna set this end color to like not a pure black, but like a very close to black color, right? Like that, right? So then I wanna add a keyframe for blend with original. And we'll move forward here just by like a couple of frames and we'll set our blend with original up to 100%. And then we'll move forward by one frame and we'll set this down to 0%. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these keyframes, copy them, and then make, maybe move over by a few frames, paste them, and kind of just repeat this animation just for a short bit. And then as we get closer to our titles popping up, you know, I'll probably just bring those keyframes in, copy again. And this will create a nice, really quick flicker animation. Um, that's gonna look pretty cool. So real quick, here's what we'll have. Boom, a nice little flicker, and then it'll be completely black. So now we'll add some particles to make this stand out. So these are the particles that we'll be creating. So to do this, we'll go to layer new solid and we'll call it particles and we'll click OK. And then we'll go to effect simulation and we're gonna grab CC particle world. First, we'll set the birth rate to three. We'll come here longevity, set this up to like six. We'll open up the producer, set the radius X and Y to zero. And then let's set the radius Z to like point three, three, something like that. All right, then we'll close this up. Let's go into the physics of all this and we'll set the velocity to 0.1. And of course we're gonna set the gravity down to zero because we want these particles to be coming at us. So that's what we have, you know, kind of cool, but we got a little bit of work to do. We'll come here to the extra, set this to 0.7. Then let's set this particle type to a tri-polygon. You can experiment with different, you know, options here, like cube might be pretty cool, but We'll cut this in a second. And then let's come here to the birth size and set this to zero. And let's come here to the depth size. And you know, maybe maybe we'll keep this at maybe 0.2. And let's do max opacity to 100%. And here we can change our colors. We'll do more of a warm palette here. So we'll do like a nice, you know, orange. And then we'll come here to the second color. And maybe we'll do like a darker type red, like so. So that's what we'll do. And I think that looks good. So one thing we wanna do is take this particle layer, put it underneath everything that we have here. So now we have that flicker and the particles come in underneath our circle. One thing we can add to this is go to effects, stylize, and we'll grab glow. We'll set the glow radius to maybe, you know, 50, um, and I'll just make this stand out even more. Before we move on, as you know, creating motion graphics from scratch takes so much time and it's just challenging. To help you get work done in under a minute, we have produced over 10,000 templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro. For example, in our Pulse Pack, you can preview these really cool templates and then apply them to your project. From there, you can change the settings to your needs and bam, another project complete. To see all of our templates and start saving time right now, be sure to check our links below. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and make this scene stand out with a series of effects that we'll use with adjustment layer. So go to layer, new adjustment layer. Go ahead and remember that keyboard shortcut. And in this first one, we'll call this optics. So let's go to effect, distort, and we'll grab optics compensation. We'll check on reverse lens distortion and set this up to like 110 to field of view. Um, and this will 
help distort the edges of the composition is going to look a lot different and I think really cool. So one thing I don't like about this is is affecting the bottom title here. So to fix this, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this adjustment layer underneath that title right there. Um, and we'll help that stand out a little bit later. So it's pretty cool. So as you can see, it's not pulling in the center of the composition, but as you get towards the edges, it just feels like things get warped and you know, it has a nice look to it. Now, another thing I would like to add to this is a nice blur. So we'll go ahead and create another adjustment layer. We'll call it blur. And then we'll go to effect, uh, blur and sharpen. And we're gonna grab my favorite blur effect, which is the camera lens blur. And there's multiple ways to use this effect. Um, so like how I like to use this in a very fast way is just grab the ellipse tool and from the center, we'll hold down shift and control on our keyboard. This will allow us to draw out a mask from the center of our composition, kind of like this. And if with the mask selected right here, you can align the mask in the center of your composition, which is a smart thing to do. But once you have your mask created, we'll come here to subtract and you know, already it's gonna create a nice blur effect around the edges. Now, one thing we can do and we should do is to F on keyboard for mass feather and feather this out. So maybe like 200, you know, anywhere where it's gonna start to look smooth. You know, so that looks pretty cool. We can increase the blur radius here to like try 10 real quick and it's gonna be way more intense. So it's really up to you where you wanna put that setting. I might just go to a, maybe bring that down by a little bit. You know, somewhere to find a nice, you know, fine line where this is gonna work. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is be able to control the lighting of this scene. So right now our eyes are focused towards the center of the composition because of this circle. And I think the blur effects and the optics help with that. However, there are some bright elements uh, appearing around the edges of our comp, which I think is a little bit distracting. It's kind of cool, but it's optional. All this stuff is optional. So first thing we'll do is create another adjustment layer and then we'll go to effect perspective and we're gonna grab CC spotlight. And I do really like this effect because it does control you know, the lighting of the scene in a very easy way, in a unique way specifically. So by default, you get two anchor points with this effect. You get one here in the corner and one here in the center. So we can like move this one over and you see the lighting changes and we can move the other anchor point up even higher and that's gonna help you know, increase the scope of the spotlight effect. Now, one thing I wanna do with this is make sure that the edge softness is set up to like 100%. So it's very subtle. Feel free to adjust the anchor points as you see fit. But right now we're definitely gonna be focused in on the center of this effect. And keep in mind, you might not want these effects to be affecting any of the other titles. Like down here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this underneath our title uh, so we can still see that. So the next effect I'm gonna throw in here is something I use in all my tutorials, which is the noise effect, but I'm gonna show you how to properly use this uh, to help create some more detail. But once again, it's up to you if you wanna use this. So go ahead and create yourself an adjustment layer. Uh, we'll go to effect noise and grain and we'll add noise to this. We'll set this up to 12% and uncheck use color noise. Um, so by default, you have to zoom in and kind of see the texture that you get from this. Uh, but another way to make this pop is go ahead and create yourself a new solid. Um, and we want to keep the darkness of the background, but don't make it pure black. Make it just a very, very dark gray um, to where it is still going to appear black. But we put this underneath everything you're gonna get way more texture from that noise effect. Um, and that's gonna help make things stand out even more with that noise and that very dark background, which isn't pure black. So now I wanna show you how cool it can be to add another element to your scene underneath all the effects that we created, like this rotating title here. So we'll grab the textile tool and we'll type out a title. All right, so if your title typed out here, I'm just gonna solo this for a second. We'll come here and grab the ellipse tool and make sure your layer is selected and we're gonna draw out a circle, you know, like this, right? It's gonna be this mask. And we'll come here to the text layer. We'll come here to path options, set this to mask one. And we can grab our mask and make sure this is kind of like in the center of our composition like so. All right, so we can see that our title is right here on our mask. Uh, what we can do is make our title a little bit bigger, you know, make it stand out and we can come here and just type out the title several different times. So you know, we'll just paste it in there, do like a minus key. And you know, that should be good. We'll do three copies of this and we'll just put a minus there at the end. So you'll have to adjust the character settings here to kind of make this fit perfectly. Uh, but essentially what I wanna do, and then what we can do is make sure we control double click the pan behind tool to make sure the anchor point is in the center of the composition. And we get R and keyboard for rotation. Alt click the stopwatch and type in time, asterisk, I don't know, 20, 30, 40. Uh, that will just be how fast that this will spin. So we'll do time asterisk 30. 
and you know that's cool then you know what we can do is unsolo this layer uh, we can put this in a different spot of our composition so perhaps i'm gonna go ahead and scale this by hitting s my keyboard for scale and just make this a little bit larger um, and just adjust where i'm gonna want to put this all right and that should be fine i'm gonna go ahead and bring this layer and put it underneath everything except for maybe the particles and nice, that takes the form of this composition. Now what I want to do is go to effect, uh, generate, and maybe grab a gradient ramp with this and set our end of color uh, to match the color scheme of our composition. So like nice red, grab the uh, other color here and set this to like a nice orange. So around that nice palette. Um, we can go ahead and revisit this in a second, but I like to go to effect, stylize and grab glow. And we'll set the glow radius to let's say 90 and the glow intensity is like 2.5. And then we'll set the glow threshold up to like 100%. Uh, this will kind of help the glow blend in there a little better. And now we have a cool element that's been put into our scene. We can take this uh, text layer that we've created, duplicate it by going to edit, duplicate. And we can just move this over to the other side of our composition. And with some final positioning adjustments, here's what we have. Everything's really coming together. You see just adding some random elements underneath all those effects can really make the scene pop. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is just an overall, you know, color effect to your scene. So we, you can add like flickering, you can add camera shakes, a lot of things you can do to this. Uh, but I want to add just a creative element in here that's going to, uh, you know, fit the theme of our project. So as you remember, this circle does a little flicker. So we'll go ahead and create ourselves an adjustment layer. And this can be used to help tie in different types of elements in your scene. So for example, we come here to effect uh, channel and we grab invert, right? Um, say we want to reveal that back circle title in at say this moment, and we want to use the invert effect to make that happen. So for example, we'll come here to our adjustment layer We'll add here frame for invert, we'll move forward or back by a couple of frames and set this up to 100%. And then we'll have this invert effect be up for a second and then we'll hit your keyboard, bring the keyframes, add a keyframe, move forward by one frame and set up to 100%. So then what we can do, is take these keyframes, copy them and also paste them in another place in your composition later in time so we can have somewhat of a flicker animation to your overall scene. And when it's all said and done, we have this really cool composition that invert effect brings in these rotating titles and we just have it happening again. So a lot of cool effects in this one to create a unique composition just to show you, you know, without any of these creative effects and with the effects turned off, our scene can look kind of boring, you know, like this, but with the effects all turned on at the same exact time, it makes a huge difference into your composition. So not only can you enhance your work with some really cool effects stacks, you can also download our free After Effects and Premiere Pro templates. Those links are below. You can get our Motion Duck extension and preview and drag and drop those templates into your current projects. You can also hit us up on our Instagram. Uh, we have cool After Effects content on there as well. And always be creating.